And I'd like to introduce Dr. Madeline Cunningham before she comes. Um, her and her staff, uh, and who are here in her laboratory, have been working diligently on this condition for literally decades. Um, she's a tenured professor at the University of Oklahoma. And uh, she came together with me and joined forces and said that there was a great need here. And um, what people don't realize, uh, as, uh, as we heard here about, that it's often misdiagnosed. But the immune system is a very strong, one of the strongest systems in our body. And the immune system keeps us free from disease and wards off germs. And this is what uh, Dr. Cunningham has been studying in her immunology and microbiology labs for, for decades. And yet what happens is an infection will trigger the immune system and through what we might think of like unfriendly fire, where in wartime you can't distinguish the enemy from who the friendly people are. The friendly people get attacked, and in this case it's actually the different receptors in the brain. And when that happens, you see all these symptoms. So I, I'm very honored to, to work with Dr. Cunningham, who has been a great inspiration to me, and who has been the genesis of what we do, and we named this the Cunningham Panel because of her work. And so uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Cunningham. Thank you. Is this, can you hear me? Uh, someone was saying that the, they couldn't hear in the back. Can, you, can everyone hear? Um, I certainly want to thank the state of Oklahoma for proclaiming today Pandas Awareness Day. It's, it's taken um, quite a while uh, over the past 15 years. The discovery of pandas was in 1998 by Dr. Susan Sweeto uh, in Washington, D.C. And you'd probably like to hear a little bit about uh, the history uh, of how this disease became discovered um, and how I got involved uh, in actually investigating pandas over the last 15 years. Uh, Dr. Sweeto actually called me uh, because I have studied group A streptococcal infections and their sequelae uh, for the past, as Craig said, I'm very old, <laughs> for the past 30 years or more. And uh, we were investigating a disease that is called rheumatic fever. And in that disease, the streptococcus incites an immune response in children that attacks the heart and the brain and may leave the children very crippled uh, for the rest of their lives. And so um, Dr. Sweeto began to investigate because she was uh, in pediatrics but was specifically in psychiatry at the National Institutes of Health. And we've been funded uh, by the National Institutes of Health for about the past uh, 30 years. Uh, so you, the taxpayer, I have to tell you, you, the taxpayer, and you do all the time, your taxes actually go to research both in Oklahoma and all the other states uh, in the United States for us to actually take your money and use it to investigate diseases and, of course, the ones that affect our children uh, because our children are so precious to us. Uh, it's wonderful that I can be able to tell you this story today where Dr. Sweeto called me said, you've studied rheumatic fever and strep for a very long time. I need your help because I've discovered a disease that is similar to one that's in rheumatic fever. And so I began to investigate it and we had a child in the hospital here uh, in, uh, at the University of Oklahoma and actually we, we made some reagents that are unique. Uh, our laboratory makes human monoclonal antibodies, which may sound weird to you, but we take cells from the blood that are making the antibodies that cause the disease and we actually can make these reagents in the laboratory and once we do uh, we can understand what is happening in the person's blood and we can then go to their blood and better understand the disease and so that's what's happened all these years and then we found these five different tests uh, that actually reflect by using all five of them we're able to detect almost every child that has this disease. And uh, I can also say from studies that we've done that actually the antibodies are reduced and decrease as the child improves. And so the antibodies, we believe, are the cause. We've studied their mechanisms and 
uh, have found that they affect the dopamine receptors in the brain. So it is probably a dopamine receptor encephalitis, either very mild to very severe. And those children that are very severe, of course, it is, is very daunting for the medical community. And one of the things that I do want to tell you, you may wonder, what are we doing now? What are we doing to help the public? And there are 16 physicians and myself that meet every Tuesday uh, afternoon at 4 o'clock by telephone, and we talk about cases. Uh, in fact, yesterday we had a very, very serious case that was presented of a child that cannot function, and it was so daunting that I, I won't go over the symptoms with you. But I want you to know that it brings tears to my eyes. You are the people that have helped make it change. Not me, but people like you all over the United States. It's amazing to travel and talk to families from California to New York City. And so what I can tell you at, at the State Department in Oklahoma is from sea to shining sea, we are conquering this disease, and it's amazing out there, and thank you so much.